and then you no longer fit and proper to remain on the bench. You have to exit. And he leaves the bench and they refer him to trial. It will be almost impossible for him to, get, to, to, to go free from the court because his own peers have condemned him. But when you have not allowed the peer review to take place and you're in breach of due process, you file charges against him. Tendency is that he may go off the hook. Now, you are basing this on separation of powers. Uh, I'll draw your attention quickly to what happened last week. Uh, the NJC swung into action and wielded a big stick. Yeah. Uh, and that saw two judges. As even though there was some controversy as to whether or not Justice Ademola retired or whether he resigned. First and foremost, what do you make of that? Did, would you say that he was shown the way out? Or, you know, would you think that uh, since the resignation letter came before the announcement, then he did resign? Well, I think um, from the newspaper report, he's put in his letter, and then I think it's also reported that he, he, he returned one month's salary in, in lieu of uh, uh, mm -hmm. notice. Mm -hmm. So that may mean that what is the effect of that in labor law? Once uh, an, um, an, empl uh, an employee does that, or a public servant does that, what, what does it amount to? If it amounts to that he um, is out of service, then so be it. But the announcement by the NJC came the same day, um, you know, saying that they were retiring him compulsorily. Well, I do not think NJC can retire. They can only recommend that he be retired. And if the recommendation has to be accepted by another authority, until that acceptance comes in, because it may be rejected, it may be accepted. So, there is, effectively speaking, the uh, stand of the NGC has not been approved by, by the authority, which is the president. So, but on the side of Jesse Ademola, according to the report, he has given a letter, a notice, he has paid one month salary in lieu of, uh, I mean, in lieu. That would then mean that. Uh, Technically, he's out. Mm. Technically, he's out of service. Even though it, the announcement came the same day, if there are the the insinuations that indeed mm. he got wind of the fact that he was I wouldn't know to that. retired. It, 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 I, I wouldn't know about that. What I'm trying to say is the process of the NGC retiring him is, uh, is just a, it's about com to commence. What if the president rejects the recommendation? So where, does, where are we then with this talk of separation of powers? No, what if, I, if indeed the president still has a say in, in, in the actions that the NJC will take, what are we talking about separation of powers for? Well, we, we're talking of separation of powers. It doesn't mean they, they don't have to collaborate. They, they have to collaborate. It will not start and end with NJC in some cases. It will start, then the, the, the executive will have some input. But allow each organ to perform its own role. That is what separation of power is all about. What precludes an organ from pre performing its own role if a justice is found guilty, for instance, in the course of uh, carrying out his duties? Talking about the same separation of powers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there'll be talks as to uh, what about the legislature, for instance? Mm -hmm. If members of the legislature can be prosecuted by the same bodies, what prevents the EFCC from moving in into the cases of judges? Well, because we don't have a similar provision such as section 158 of the constitution and paragraph 2120 of the third schedule of the constitution in respect of legislators. We have a special provision for judges. We don't have such for the legislature. And that comes to what is the state of the law today. The state of the law is that the judges, they are treated as a special class on their own. And that is why the Constitution has imbued the NJC with the disciplinary power for breach of the Code of Conduct and then uh, Code of Judicial Conduct. Anybody, any judge who violates or breaches the code of conduct of judges is liable to be reviewed first by the NJC. That is what the purport 
the combined reading of section 158 and then the third schedule to the constitution. We don't have such provision in respect of parliamentarians. Would you, want to, would you like to see a situation whereby, even after the NJC has taken action, that it refers them further for prosecution, if indeed there are criminal matters involved? That is what this judgment has said. But we haven't seen that. Well, it's unfortunate. Very rarely do we see that the NJC finishes a matter and it is referred to the EFCC. Oh, no. There is one now that uh, there is a court of appeal judge who has been removed by the, by the NJC and then EICPC is now stepping into the matter. What this one boils down to is they, want, they have to remove the toga of judicial authority from a person before you put him in the dock. It's a bit of an anathema to go with the dignity of the, uh, of the judiciary and enter a dock. It's bizarre. And that is why it is salutary that he be forced, divested of status as a judge before you put him in the dock. Hmm. If that is the case, do you think that this had any influence whatsoever? This is without prejudice to the judgments that were delivered you know, on the judges. Do you think that that could happen?